Hi everybody or whoever's watching. Thank you so much for watching. Well, I'm going to put this video actually on both channels. Well, I'm going to, well, maybe not. It's two different topics. I was sitting here, right? I'm waiting for a sale. Actually, I just literally just finished the sale. And um, I was selling to a man. And uh, yeah, okay, th th this will be two topics. It's going to be two different videos. Um, I sent a, a, a video to, or I sent a uh, uh, a picture of the person's number to a guy friend of mine because the guy that I'm selling to, I just sold to, it turned out it was a woman and her husband, thank God, um, didn't have his full face in the profile. So I was just a little bit concerned about that. And um, so I sent everything to my guy friend just in case something happened. And y'all, I just thought about this like, We as women, from the time we're born, what are y'all taught? What are women taught at four years old, right? It starts about four years old. You're taught no one's supposed to touch you in your no-no place, right? Are you, if you can remember back, being four years old, you were told that. And you were told if somebody tries to touch you, you tell a teacher, tell your parent. Women, as we know, are also predators, but the majority are men. And isn't that crazy, y'all? From the time we are born, essentially, women are taught to always be scared and aware. The experience of a woman walking this earth and the experience of a man is so different. We're always on high alert. We know at any second of the day, if we're inside the house, a man can break in and R-A-P-E you because he knows you're a woman and he decides what's yours is his. You know that right now driving the car, if my tire pops and I'm stuck on the side of the road at night, I can get attacked because I'm a woman. And a person knows, they, a man knows he has more strength than me, he can attack me. If I'm in a grocery store, and I've had it happen in my, in my younger years, the man can follow me home, he can follow me around the store, get in his car and follow me right home. Because he sees something he wants and he's going to take it. That's what life of being a woman is. I remember 9, 10, whatever fifth grade is, understanding what it was now. At the time, I didn't understand it. The student teacher was trying to uh, groom me. I didn't understand that that's what it was at the time. He was trying to groom me. I knew he was doing something wrong. He didn't actually ever touch me. I knew he was doing something wrong or trying to do something wrong. But so I would, uh, so I like figured out how to not be, I figured out how to not let him get me alone because he would try to groom me in the lunchroom and be in front of everybody, but I was always sitting alone. The best people for pedos to get are people like me. Loners, people who don't have friends, they know they can get you because you're lonely and you just want a friend. That's who they know they can get. They know you won't tell anybody because you're so grateful for a friendship. And then it's just so it's so intricate and dirty how they groom and who they pick. When I was 14, um, I was in camp and it was a couple of males, a couple of females. I'll never forget one day laying down on the mat. 14 years old, innocent ass kid. All kids are innocent. I was laying on my stomach reading a book on a mat. And one of the camp directors, oh, Pedos love to be camp directors. Camp, camps, don't let it be a Christian camp. Ah, shit, it was a Christian camp. It was a United Methodist Church out here in Dallas on fucking Spring Valley. No wonder I don't go to church. I, so many reasons why I don't fuck with church. Don't even get me started on that about all the fucked up, dirty shit people in church turn a blind eye to and look at you like a church whore when the men in the church are trying to fucking damn near molest you and do all kind of creepy shit to you. 
let me do a story time on my experiences in churches and how fucking gross people in church are and how they treat you when they know it's the local fucking pedo and you don't know it's the pedo because you're new at the church and he starts trying to do weird shit to you and they look at you like some kind of goddamn Jezebel that's another story for, for another time but it's a lot of reasons I don't fuck with church but uh, anyway I was laying down in the bed on my stomach that dog will get killed one day and he came in I didn't even hear him y'all I used to love reading books I was such a nerd because we weren't allowed to watch TV we were only allowed to watch black shows I'm in my 40s what black shows were around when I was growing up different world and the Cosby show we used to only be able to watch the Cosby show on Thursday night. I remember. And then when Different World came, my mom couldn't tell us no because she said we could only watch black shows. So we got to watch Different World and Cosby show. So I used to just read books all the time. And, and then when I discovered magazines, book, I was a magazine read little rascal. Uh, so I didn't hear him coming because I was so involved with the book. And he came and he laid on top of me. I was on my stomach, laying down flat on the mat. And he laid on top of me. Y'all, I wasn't even a regular 14-year-old. I was a very immature 14-year-old. On top of being 14, because I was very sheltered. What do you do? What are you supposed to do when a grown-ass, he had to be 6'2", 6'2", man lays on top of you and you're a 14-year-old kid who's already kind of kiddish on top of being 14. These are so crooked. I laid there and I was so scared. We were alone because everybody had gone to an activity and I decided to stay and read my book. And uh, he didn't he didn't do anything to me. God, oh, I didn't deserve that. I don't know what ended up happening. I was so scared. I was just paralyzed in fear. And then a man will say to you, well, why didn't you do anything? I hate when men say shit like that. Or I hate when women say that. Because the women normally, if they tell you, you what you should have done, they've probably been victimized too. Because they're really speaking through their own self who was also victimized. When somebody tells a victim what they should have done different, that's so gross. <laughs> but he didn't do anything to me. He just laid on top of me. And then, I don't think he did. If he did, I, I, I erased it. So that was that. But, um... I have so many stories, but um, to be a woman, to have a vagina, because I want to get me started on people who don't have vaginas, who call themselves women, who have never had the fucking lived experience of somebody who was born with a vagina. To have a vagina, to have a to be born with a vagina, is to be a target in this world. It has nothing to do with race, class, or anything. If you are born with a vagina, you are a target in this world. I remember being 11, 11 I think, and a man coming by. I didn't know at the time. I didn't, un I didn't understand a lot of things because I was 11, and a very young 11. He stopped, and I was walking to school, and he had the car window open, and he was jacking off. And asked me, do I want to ride? And I didn't realize he was jacking off. Let me tell y'all, I looked 11 when I was 11. I didn't look 18. I didn't look 20. I looked 11. And I thank God he didn't snatch me. I thank God nothing happened to me. And this was right in Dallas over here by Richardson. It used to be called Mayhem Road. Now it's called Esperanza. So these are all things, the experiences I've had. I remember when, when a man came up to me once. And this has been black men. Y'all, this has been white men. This has been Mexican men. I've had men of every race try to violate me. Um, 12, I think, 11 or 12, a guy came up to me asking directions. And he had, his, he had his dick out. And I don't know if he was jacking it or what he was doing, but he had his dick out. And I was so scared. I didn't, I didn't even look down or anything. I was just so scared. And now I, I bopped that shit. In a, I bopped that bitch in the throat. I would kick him in his nuts. I would try to gouge that bitch's eyes out. Renee, now, I would, me and that bitch would be fighting. He'd whoop my ass, but he'd be fucked up too. You would have your dick out walking up on me, you nasty bitch. <laughs> Knowing I was a fucking child. The guy in the car jacking off was a white man. 
The guy that laid on top of me in camp was a black man. The guy that walked up to me with his dick out was a Mexican man. They, every race. There's no woman is safe. If you're born, born with a if you're born with a vagina, you are born into trauma. Y'all don't think about that, do you? None of us do. We're so used to just always being on alert. We don't even know that it's not normal. We're not supposed to have to look out for being raped and fucked up and beat up because we have a vagina. Being a woman is hell. Oh, let's not even talk about the <laughs> the bleeding without dying every month. That's a whole other topic that has nothing to do with this. But you ever think about that? From little girls and boys get molested all the time. Please don't think I'm discounting that. But I'm not a man. And I've never been a boy. But I know it happens. Please don't think I'm discounting that. Some guy listening to this right now may have very well have been molested. So I'm not discounting your pain or your experience. Please don't think that. But I can only speak from being a woman. And I know that a majority of molesting happens to women. But I'm not going to discount any man's pain because men get molested too. And y'all, that might be almost worse because the stigma, women can openly talk about being molested. Men, if they talk, if men talk about it, it's real cruel what the world does. If you're five years old and you're getting fucking molested by a grown ass nigga, what you supposed to do? You're supposed to fight him off, you're a little boy. You don't even understand that you're getting molested. Then when you're being molested and you're a boy, as a human, you get certain good feeling sensations from that. So then you've gotten molested. You're a boy, you're a little boy. You going through puberty. You connect your mind to feeling good, but a man did it. And then you, you like girls, but a man made you feel good in that way. Women, when we get, when it happens to us from men and we go through puberty and we like boys, we can kind of correlate it, even though it still fucks our brains up too. But for a, for a man, being touched on by a man, oh man, what that must do, I, I, I can't even imagine. And I don't blame any man for keeping that pain to himself because it's so... Um, the world judges you. The world treats men like men who get molested when they're little. The world acts like you're supposed to have just beat the nigga up. A little boy is supposed to beat somebody up. A little boy that doesn't even understand he's being molested. Then you have these predator women who... Y'all, yeah, I've met so many guys who got molested by women. Who are so... If you ever meet a man who's really hypersexual, like creepy hypersexual... Sit them down and talk to them. I had a co-worker years ago. I'm about, I'm about to end this. I'm just really talking. I had a co-worker years ago who uh, I almost had to call him and resources on him. He was doing too much. He was just doing too much. And me and him sat down and talked one day. And I said, hey, we'll call him Mike. I said, Mike, what the fuck are you doing? I said, Mike, you, you need to stop. You need to stop. And I, I talked to him. Me and Mike sat down. Mike ended up telling me. Y'all, that was crazy. Mike ended up telling me about being molested. Uh, the woman used to do stuff to him. She was, she was babysitting and used to do stuff to, to him in a bathtub. And uh, he started crying about it. Y'all might think he was lying. I don't think he was lying. I think he really did get molested. His, his level of hypersexuality was abnormal. Me and Mike talked about it. And after we talked about it, I don't know how we had that much time to talk, but we did. We really formed a bond. Uh, I saw a change in Mike at work. He stopped being so perverted with women. It changed the way, in my heart, in my mind, how he functioned going forward when I helped him understand that being molested was highly correlated to him being so hypersexual. So I know men who have been molested. I do. I know another guy. Uh, we dated, and sex-wise, there was something off. And I later found out it was a lady who would be in a laundromat, and the little boys would go in, 
and she would be touching them down there and molesting them. It being touched in a sexual way creates a good feeling. But you're not supposed to be having that good feeling at 10 and 12 and 9. That's not supposed to be happening. So when that happens at that early age, you don't understand it's something that feels good, but you know something's not right too. You know something bad. Your brain gets very confused. And so it really fucked him up. Uh, you could feel it. He had a lot of guilt tied around sex. And I didn't understand at the time what it was. And I said, and I talked to him and stuff. And we talked about everything. And it explained a lot about sex with him. He had a lot of shame about sex. This is a real bad world, boy, I tell you. You really have to just murk pedos. They have to just not exist anymore. You have to delete them. You have to delete them. They have to just be taken out because they can't help it. They can't stop it. They can't stop themselves. They cannot stop themselves. So it's better for them to be deleted than continue to harm. Because many times the kids they harm become adults and harm other people too. Or the kids harm other kids. It just is a vicious cycle. So when somebody is twisted like that, they really have to be deleted. There's no other answer. You can't rehab that. But anyway. It's tough, y'all. And if y'all feel if y'all want to share in the comments any of your experiences, especially if your profile if, if your profile has your first and last name, do not comment. I don't want anybody putting a comment and having their name out because I don't want to buy unless you feel comfortable doing that. But if anybody has any questions or needs advice or anything like that, um, or wants to comment, please do. I want you to comment and we can start a dialogue about that. Or tell me if you ever really realized how dangerous it is for us. Well, you do, but do you ever just really think about how ridiculous that is? That it's so dangerous for us? Born being born with a vagina just makes you a target, right? It's crazy. Okay, bye y'all.